Hey guys, Harrison one of my it once again with a brand new video for you, and welcome back to the online racer. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, for those guys that didn't catch my Facebook or Twitter announcements a couple of days ago, here's the cinch. Wow, that's, 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 that sounded very impossible there, didn't it? Um, basically, Dre TV is not going to be on this channel anymore. The reason why is because I kind of talk about MotoGP during race weekends, whatever happens anyway. So it kind of makes Dre TV a Formula 1 based show. And I reckon just having more F1 gameplay on here, given the fact my career mode is now corrupted, is probably more entertaining for you guys in the long run. So I'm going to bring back the online race to compensate for the lack of Formula 1 content on here whenever something topical comes up in the world of Formula 1 again. So I really enjoy this series, actually, and I really enjoy being able to talk for long periods of time about... Um, you know, subjects in Formula 1 like, you know, Hulkenberg and Maldonado's Lotus Switch back when I was doing this properly and things like that. So, I might do another one later this week of talking about Andre Lotterer. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, let's talk about the big one this week. And uh, the 2015 season hasn't even started yet and we're already making history. Because by the time that season starts and rolls around... 17, well he will be, God willing, 17 year old Max Verstappen will be the youngest driver in the history of Formula 1. Just last week he had signed a deal to become a, a part of Red Bull's driver program and just a week later he has been confirmed to be driving the Toro Rosso seat for next season alongside the Neil Kvyat um, with John Eric Verne making way at the end of the season. We'll talk about Verne in a little bit but um it's kind of a crazy story given Max's relative inexperience when it comes to single seaters and, and, and um, things like that because what many people may not know is that he was karting for about eight years I think from 2005 to 2013 this is his first year in single seat cars he just jumped into the um, FIA European Formula 3 Championship this past season with Van Amersfoort Racing and he's already got eight wins and 12 podiums in total in his rookie year, which is incredibly impressive. There's no, there's no, there's no line there. The, the kid has clearly got some talent, and you know he's doing very, very well for himself for a 16-year-old in a, you know, in, in in his first year in a single-seat car. He's doing a very, very solid job. Um, obviously, Red Bull found that very attractive, and they, they weren't the only ones who found it pretty attractive. He, he was negotiating pretty hard between. Red Bull and the Mercedes Young Driver program, um, but I, I, I seem to get the impression that in, that, in my opinion, Red Bull were able to win out over Mercedes in the negotiations because what's the one thing Red Bull has with that Mercedes don't have right now? You guessed it, a junior team, and and the ability to give Verstappen a race a race seat almost immediately. That's the old, obviously for many racing drivers, that's the pinnacle, a seat in Formula 1. And as a result, obviously they can offer that to a guy like Verstappen, and Mercedes obviously can't. One, they haven't got a junior team, and two, their team is already kind of good right now. In case you haven't already noticed with Hulkenberg, not Hulkenberg, sorry, Hamilton and Rosberg, Mercedes can't offer that kind of opportunity, because they don't have a second team, and obviously they're not going to move on Rosberg or Hamilton to get this 17-year-old questionable, unproven talent in. Um, so, it's, it's obviously it's a gamble not worth taking for Mercedes, but obviously it's one that, that Red Bull and Helmut Marko are clearly okay with. Um, so like I said, it's one thing offering an F1 seat, it's another thing offering an F1 seat to a 16-year-old who dreams of Formula 1. I mean, as a 16-year-old kid with an exciting future ahead of you, you probably find that really hard to turn down. Um, the question on, on a lot of people's minds, though, is that, is Max too young? Um, how young is too young? Now, that, that's a question many people have to kind of ask themselves here when looking at this. Because you look at Max, he's 16 years old right now. He's, he's He won't even be allowed to drive a regular car in most countries. Yet he's going to be a Formula 1 driver next year. To put this into perspective, you have to be 17 in my country, the United Kingdom, to before before you can start taking driving lessons. <laughs> so he can't drive a regular car in this country, but he can drive a Formula 1 car. It's funny how these things turn out. He won't even be allowed to drink champagne on the podium legally until his third season if this keeps up in most countries. <laughs> because he'll be 17 when he comes in. Um, that's just ridiculous. 
I mean, I look at it and I compare it to MotoGP uh, to make a quick sidetrack and comparison here about the how young is too young argument because in Moto3 there's a 16 year old age limit until recently. Um, there was a recent rule change just this last week put in saying that if you win the feeder series, the CEV Moto3 Championship, you can transition straight into the World Championship for Moto3, even if you're under the age of 16, meaning that uh, the bright new super kid talent, Quantanaro, um, can get into Moto3 immediately as a 15-year-old. Because if he came in as a 16-year-old the way his birthday is, he'd miss the first two races because he wouldn't be 16 years old. You have to be 18 now to be in the top class, which we're getting dangerously close to achieving because, I mean, Marquez debuted as a 20-year-old in the top class, and that was considered freakish enough, if you get my drift. Um, but, you know, I'm not entirely sure that age is a thing. I mean, age is nothing but a number in this circumstance, in my opinion. If the kid is that good and you think he deserves a shot, give him the shot. Now, that's all I, that's all I would say. But there is issues to this, then there is a downside to this. Do you really want to kill a young driver's career that quickly if it doesn't work out? Maybe pushing him a bit too soon might be a little bit unfair because for a kid of his age, do you really want to cut a guy's open wheel career off so quickly if it doesn't work out? I mean, the prime example is is a guy like Jaime Alguasuari, who debuted, I think, as a 19-year-old a few years ago for Toro Rosso. I think he did two seasons... And just when he was starting to come into his own, Toro Rosso released him. And the so same thing happened with Sebastian Buemi, and a similar thing happened with Sebastian Bourdais. Uh, it, it kind of begs the question a little bit of, is Red Bull's driver program a little bit too stacked at this point? I mean, 90% of their drivers that are in their academy that are, and that are in their camp are never going to get a seat in Formula 1. And, you know... When this was announced, the two big names that popped up, which clearly probably wouldn't have been happy about this kind of news, is Carlos Sanz Jr., who is generally considered as the best prospect in Red Bull's academy, and is arguably their best talent at the moment, and the other one was Anthony Felix da Costa. Now, you may remember da Costa, he was a contender for Toro Rosso seat last season, but obviously the big surprise at the end of last year was Daniil Kvyat giving... You know, getting the Toro Rosso seat instead of him when Kvyat was in GP3 at the time while the Costa had a little bit more experience and was generally considered as the number one candidate for that seat as you now may know Anthony Felix da Costa is now not a part of that faction anymore and he's now about to debut for Formula E next month um there was a lot of talk about that as well and like I remember Tiff Nadell chipping in saying you know oh you know Dirk Kvyat's done really well. He can come into GP2 and think about a Formula 1 seat in a couple of years' time. Oh, wait. <laughs> and, you know, Kvyat was debuting as a 19-year-old, and um, basically, and, you know, Kvyat broke Sebastian Vettel's points record of the youngest point scorer in the sport's history in his opening race. So, and Kvyat, I think, generally speaking, has been has looked pretty darn good this season as a 20-year-old making his debut in a rookie year. So... I think it comes down to the talent more than the age, I would say. But at the same time, you know, it's 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 more of a gamble because you have the lack of experience that goes alongside with that. I mean, again, I could talk about it in a future episode later this week, but Andre Lotterer could be about to make his Formula 1 debut at 32 um, from a different sport. So, it, it's, it, you know, the age thing, It's it's I'm not, I don't know why people are so wrapped up about the age. Maybe it's just the excitement of a really, really young talent that, that comes with that. I mean, again, we've seen it in MotoGP with Mark Marquez, you know, being the youngest ever world champion. He was just 20 when he won the world title. Um, and he's probably going to win another one this year at 21. Um, like, if I, if I make another two-wheel comparison, the field in general is getting younger. You know, we've seen guys like Maverick Vinales, who is 19 years old, and Alex Rins, who is 21, Salom, 22. Um, Mar Alex Marquez, Mark's younger brother, who's still, I think, 19 years old. Um, Jack Miller, who's 19 years old. You know, the, the, the trend in motorsport seems to be giving chances to people who are younger. It's becoming a young man's game. I think the average age of the Formula 1 grid has dropped, I'd say, at least three or four years in the in the last in, in, the, in the last decade, I would say. Um, 
Sergio Perez is now considered a, a veteran of the F1 field and he's only 24 years old. I think this is Perez's fifth season now and he's 24. Uh, see, he's got he's got plenty of experience now and he's one, and he's actually below the average age of the field. By comparison, we've now got at the top of the tree Jensen Button, who I think is 33. Alonso, I think, who just turned 33. Massa, who I think is 33 as well. So... They're going to be retiring in the next three or four years' time, I reckon. How young's the field going to be then? I think the average age right now is 20, 26. Sebastian Vettel is literally, I think, the ballpark for average age of the F1 grid, and it's going to go below his age very soon. So, I think the trend is younger guys coming in. And, you know, Max Verstappen's going to be the poster boy for that if this keeps up. And if he works out, boy, we're going to have an, a very exciting young star that, you know, will we'll be knocking on the door of getting Red Bull seat. So, but I think, as my friend Elusive Kev mentioned on Twitter, it's becoming a bit of a conveyor belt with Red Bull's talent system. You know, that if one guy's not particularly good, he's now holding up the queue. Um, you know, for example, I think Mark Webber was, was the stopgap for Red Bull's driver development program when he was at Red Bull until last season. You know, him being more experienced in his upper 30s. I think what Weber was doing was cashing his was cashing in his loyalty checks to keep getting extra years because Red Bull are very strong in their driver program and and apparently it was a definite thing that Helmut Marco didn't like Mark Weber very much. And I think that's part of the reason why is because he was the stopgap for Red Bull's driver development program. And, you know, obviously Daniel Ricciardo has come to the top of that system this year and he's obviously starting to prove dividends and starting to work out because he's been a very exciting you know, talent that has exceeded expectations, um, and now, and now the new bumper holding that back clearly is John Eric Verne, and I feel really bad for John Eric Verne. I mean, I think he's going to be another Bremi and Algaswari. He won't be coming back. I, I, I don't see where a team employs him. Maybe Sauber, if he's got good money behind him, he is sponsored. But will Red Bull continue to sponsor him? I don't know. That's that's up in the air. I think, but. Vern, I think, is 25 years old, and I think Vern was was very, very, very close to Daniel Ricciardo in terms of raw ability. Like I said, him and him and him and Ricciardo were very, very equal in my opinion. I think they were very close. I think both have shown that they could be in a Red Bull seat one day um, if the circumstances came about correctly. I think they were very evenly matched. I think Ricciardo just had a little bit of a better run of form towards the end of last season, and I think that probably worked out in his favour. On top of that as well, another point I want to make is that I think Ricardo is probably a little bit more marketable than John Eric Verne is, given the fact that English is his first language. He's got the smile, he's got the charm, you know, he's he's got he's a, he's a sexy pick because everybody likes Ricardo. Not everybody likes John Eric Verne. And on top of that, I think John Eric Verne's been incredibly unlucky his entire career to be stuck with a team that's reliability has been so bad. I mean, look at this season. Verne leads the retirements with five. And, and I think they were all mechanical failures on Verne's part. So what can he do? What can he do if he's been given an unreliable car for literally half the season? He's probably been the unluckiest driver in the whole field this year. It's ridiculous. And now he's about to lose his job through no fault of his own, really. Basically for not being Australian. Um, so that's an issue, you know, and you know, I don't know if Vern will get another chance you know how Formula 1 works, it's a very ruthless sport and if you get out of the sport, it's very very hard to get back in, Adrian Sutzel I think was the exception to the rule in terms of a guy that got another shot and obviously Kimi Raikkonen is a ridiculously good talent so of course he'd get back in if he wanted to but it's rare that a mediocre driver or a driver that's lower down the pecking order gets a second crack at it um, normally, if you're cut once, you you tend to not come back. I mean, look at Paul De Resta. Um, there's another prime example of a guy that I thought was much better than what people made out. Had one bad run of form and wasn't given another job after that. But um, overall, I'd love to hear your guys' take on the situation. You know, what do you think of Max Verstappen? Is he ready? Do you think he's too young? What do you make of John Eric Verne's future? Um, do you think he, do you think that he's been very unlucky and unfortunate to have missed out? And do you think Red Bull's drive program is flawed because of how stacked it is? Is is it a problem now where drivers are sponsored but ultimately no, they can't get to the top? Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys um, enjoy the return of the format. And if you want to see more, let me know. And of course, until next time, I've been Harrison101. Thank you very much for watching.
and I'll catch you guys next time. Sayonara.